In this video, I'm gonna go over all the tools and the supplies that I use in my home studio so that you can set up your very own at home using the supplies that I use and give you a little description about what each one of them does. So stay tuned, you don't wanna miss out. Oh, right, everyone. Like I said before, this is a video that's going to go in detail about all of the tools that I use on a day-to-day -day basis in my design studio. And this is for anyone at home wanting to start a DIY fashion design studio. So let's get started. However, first I'm going to ask that you subscribe to my channel if you like my content and if you wanna learn more about DIY fashion design. First, I wanna get into the absolute bare bones which is the table that all of these items are on. This is an Ikea special and I stuck two together. So if you're looking for great cutting room tables, go to Ikea if you can in your area or an equivalent. If you are in a small town, you will have to order something online. Also need a self-healing cutting mat, preferably two. I only have one, so I will be getting another one of these mats. Another side note about the actual table, because I said this is from Ikea, these are modular office desk. If you do not have an Ikea in your area or you are in a small town, check out the office supply stores that you have. Check out their office furniture section as well. I use the Ikea because it has adjustable legs and I'm tall. To me, this is another fundamental, but this is my this is my ironing, foamy ironing mat. Okay, so this used to be an old cushion for a bench. The reason why it works so well is because I can pin things to it. It is wider than an ironing board. I can place that cushion on my table and press my items direct, which helps when you're doing very drapey items and they're flipping all over the place. Having your pressing station on a big table like this helps. And I don't need to cover this with fabric in order to press because I have that cushion there. So that's a little side note. While I'm on the subject of ironing, we'll go over this. In my opinion, a necessity, it's a ham. It's for sleeves, collars, necklines, and it's for pressing around curves. So I think this is really fundamental for any design studio. Please ignore the stains on this, but this is like a little miniature ironing board that I use because it's elevated. I like it. I think that's another fundamental. I purchased this at a dollar store. Speaking of irons, this is my iron that I use. It's not the greatest. I need a new one. And the reason is, is that it doesn't have the manual uh, press for steam. More beneficial to get manual steam iron where you push the little steam and it shoots out onto your garment. For measuring, okay, I have an assortment of quilting rulers, which I love. Um, they do a right angle. It is an absolute necessity that you get something that can give you a proper right angle. So a right angle ruler, a quilting ruler does the job and I like them because they have so many small, they have um, one eighth inch increments. I like, especially for when I am adding seam allowance to my patterns. Another necessity is a French curve. I really like them because you can get a more accurate line or sharp line for your sleeve or any curve. And I think having a very accurate line, a very clear and accurate line when you're pattern drafting is important. This is a meter stick and a yard stick. So it has centimeters and inches on it, but this measures to a full meter. You need to draw really straight lines on patterns. You will need a yard stick. This, okay, after we've done the ruler, we're gonna go on to cutting. I have a few different items for cutting in these li little different clusters here. In my scissor cluster, we have we have paper scissors here. I have a pointy pair of cutting shears. This is great for more sheer fabrics or fabrics that are slippery. These shears are a little heavier and they have a blunt tip. I use them for thicker fabrics. Or These little snips here are for cutting threads at the sewing machine or when I'm pressing. You can get right nice and close to corners. They're not for cutting pieces of material or interfacing or whatnot. You would need scissors for that or you would need a separate smaller pair if you wanted specifically just for fabric. So always make sure that scissors for paper are separate for the ones for fabric and that's why I'm moving on to these rotary cutters here. You can see I have three. This one's just specifically for fabric. This one, these two are for cutting paper and they're left and right handed so I can 
go at it from both sides. And I didn't go over the necessity of the flexible tape measure, but here it is. Make sure you have a flexible tape measure. This is a designer essential for measuring all sorts of things, but on pattern drafting, it's for measuring curves. Paper, scissor, like so, you lay the measurement on and you measure around the curve. So that's what I use that for in pattern drafting. Also measuring people for my blocks. Now we have to mark our patterns. So I have an assortment of marking tools here, specifically for patterns. I have different colored markers, sharpies, and mechanical pencils. These are for marking your pattern. And when I was in pattern drafting school, you want to, the guidelines were that each different color indicated a specific portion part of your pattern. So anything labeled in black meant that it was the body or the outside or the part that you saw. Anything in red meant it was a pocket piece. Anything in blue meant it was a liner lining piece and anything done in green meant it's for interlining. Now when you draw your grain lines, I draw my grain lines in red. At home I would stick with red just so it's very obvious where your grain line is on your pattern. These two pencils are for pattern drafting as well and I indicate these as red would, if I was drawing on my pattern I'd indicate whatever shape I was doing in red that would indicate that I need to cut that out or trace it and it was a pocket. The blue if I say traced over my mechanical pencil line in blue, that would indicate that I need to cut that piece into a lining as well. And onto the mechanical pencils, I only use mechanical pencils when I'm pattern drafting because I get a consistent point. That's really important when you're measuring things down to the 16th of an inch or to the millimeter because sometimes if you're using a very dull pencil, it can be definitely more than two millimeters thick. Mechanical pencils are great for accuracy when pattern drafting. This eraser is not important because it's too small, but a white eraser is very important. We all know that. Now I use these, or these are my fabric marking chalk uh, markers. I don't, I only use them for black, fabric, uh, anything else that I use on a lighter. I use a washable marking pen because it has a finer tip or I use a mechanical pencil if I can. Now, because of that, I keep this Tide pen, which is amazing for getting off your little washable marker mark. I also have an assortment of refills. Now these, you don't need to get the expensive ones. The ones from the dollar store will fit in the pencil. Just make sure you match up the millimeter diameter. I'm moving on. We've got our miscellaneous pattern tools. Okay, so this is a notcher. I love notches and I love having a notcher. I use this thing. All all the time because sewing notches are important when you're drafting patterns as is a tracing wheel and I use this very very much when I'm tracing or upcycling clothes so if you're copying old clothes from your closet into a pattern which I have videos on you will need one of these just don't stab yourself with it they do draw blood these little tweezer things are really handy for everything seam rippers these are two different types of seam rippers this one you can kind of run along like that so if you're doing a straight line you just want to go at it these actually pick the seam thread by thread better I use these more for doing delicate fabrics this if I'm like doing denim and I'm getting impatient I just go along with that thing now you're wondering why I have a razor well probably not but I use the razor to shave off lint off of my fleece after I've dyed it it gets sometimes linty and so I shave that off if anyone can name what this thing is I can never remember the name but I use it to true my patterns in some of my videos I walk my patterns along to make sure that the stitch line is accurate and this is what you stab as you're rotating the sleeve let's say and measuring the sleeve along the armhole these things are really handy you can remember the name of that leave that in the comments in some of the videos I call this a bodkin but I, it's definitely not a bodkin. Um, this little thing here I use for hemming at the sewing machines for an overlock machine or an overlock hem which I do in some of my videos. This is really handy to keep in one hand and measure as you go. Um, speaking of sewing machine I have industrial presser feet so if you have an industrial machine at home and you only have one presser foot you're going to need a couple extra especially if you want to do a zipper. So these are zipper industrial zipper feet. They go on any they're universal. This is for sewing vinyl. It's an acrylic foot. This foot is for 
for sewing slippery items, but it has wheels. Why do I have two of them uh, that do the same thing? I'm not sure. So this is for uh, an invisible zipper. So those are the ones that I have for now. If you have a domestic sewing machine, chances are you're gonna get all of these presser feet that you need that go with your sewing machine at home. But I keep an extra pair of these bobbin casings because I like to just have a bunch that I throw in. This little tool here is for creating bias tape. I use a lot of bias tape. I have videos on making bias tape. This is the tool that I use for it. Moving along, let's just push all this out of the way. Don't forget notebooks. Yeah, I have three of them. So this one is for when I measure people on the go. This is for marketing and social media ideas and lists and design sketches. Okay, that's like a little bit of a fancier one. This one is more warped because I've put wet things in it. I have dye samples that I've put in. I keep this on the side because if these pages get a little soggy, that's okay. And if it's on the go, say I take this traveling or something. Right here, we have fabric weights. So these are fabric weights that I already had laying around. This is a geode crystal. It's nice and heavy. And this is a rock that I found on the ocean. So you don't need to spend a lot of money on weight. Fabric weights are very important when you're cutting out your patterns as and when you are anything that you need the fabric to not move I use the fabric weights for now these I purchased off Amazon and I love to have just these as fabric weights because they have a, a nice rectangular straight edge so if I really need to do something close I can lay that down we've got our tape roll you might be wondering why I'm showing you a tape roll but this is a necessity in my opinion because you got one hand on your pattern and you're trying to draft something your not gonna want to use two hands for your tape if I need tape in a pinch, right? That's why I feature that. <laughs> now over here, you're probably thinking, why hammer? Well, you're gonna need a mallet like this or a little mini hammer to hammer on your snap or your rivet. You can use a regular hammer too, but I like this because it's a little lighter. I only use this very seldomly because I have one of these lovely machines. And this is an industrial snap press. Right now it's got my fabric poker in it. So this is how I poke holes in my fabric. It is amazing. AliExpress is when I got that. And whenever you order industrial sewing supplies from AliExpress, you have to make sure that you buy the things that go with it because they will just send you the basic. That's with most industrial tools, you need to buy everything extra. That's why I like AliExpress. Okay, this is upside down. Each one of these is for a different size of snap and button. Some of these are for snaps with uh, that are 15 millimeters. Some of these are for snaps that are 13 millimeters. And so you have to pick a diameter of snap that you're gonna that you're going to commit to when you're buying these presses. I've determined that I like 15 millimeter and 13 millimeter snaps. So I have one of each, and then I have some some for denim buttons. They require a different type of press, but you can see that's what they look like. So this is one for a 13 millimeter snap and you have, it always comes with four parts. Okay, so that's what they look like up close and that's what you'll need that go along with that. But I'm telling you, having professionally done rivets and snaps and eyelets on my garments is something that really is satisfying to me. One little thing I want to talk about Okay, so one little thing that I want to talk about is this dress rack here. This clothing rack to me is an essential for any designer as well. I have my pattern hooks here. These I have acquired along the way. You can see they're very essential for these massive patterns that I have hanging up that's very unorganized. I also have her. She is a body measuring form. This one's adjustable, it was cheap. Um, the cloth ones are ideal, but at the time, at the time I didn't have an option to purchase that. So I have her and she works just good, uh, you know. Okay, everyone, so that's it for my design room essentials video. I gave you a little tour. You can see the wall I work against. There's a lovely quilt in the background and I like waving this hammer around. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave some comments in below if you have any questions about anything you've seen in this video and good luck with your design studios.